resources I hold in my hands. They are not mine to keep. I don't want to leave this world with those resources not distributed where I need to make distribution of them. Valuable resources. No matter where you are, what you're going through, how much shame or disappointment or even reproach. He took every bit of that anyhow. He took every bit of that and he nailed it to the cross. He was crucified naked at street level. He's been there. He knows where you are. He's been rejected. He lived under the roof with a great mother and a a foster father. But none of his siblings believed in him the whole time he was under that roof with them. Not until after the resurrection and he met James in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and about the 6th verse, where he appeared to him. James must have convinced all of the others. Jude that wrote the little half sheet of paper or the little gospel, little, powerful. But he absolutely convinced, he had all of his brothers and sisters in that upper room with their mother, and they all got the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. So don't give up. I don't care what you're going through, where your kids are today, where this is or where that is, what your situation is, what your status in life is, doesn't make a bit of difference. If you'll hold on, the last chapter will take care of it all. Don't take for granted anything that God has given you. This precious girl, I don't even have to know her name. I just know that she's a special person and now she's a hero or a heroine but the girl has taken her troubles and her trials and her devastation and her hurts and she's taken them to the Lord and he gave her that valuable song that will now bless every one of us so that little boy is going to bless the world that's things say money can't buy that say I've got things money can't buy And devil, you better know that anything you put on us, we're going to use it against you. We're going to use it against you, devil. He has given me time. I'm amazed at myself. It's only God, but I'm giving it back to him. You believe me that I've been up since 3.30 this morning. I'm 92 years old. We've driven three and a half. Or I feel, oh, I, I felt the devil leave out of here a while ago when that bunch was up here. God will give me strength. If I give him what I've got, he'll give me back more. I've got personality. Say, I do too. You do. Say, I've got a personality. Use it and smile. Somebody met me out there, a beautiful woman with a complexion that I'd pay money to have. I said, you're beautiful. Of course, I'm too old to not have this, but I smile. That helps. Smile at everybody in the mall. You've got all of that to use for the glory of God. Do you know Moses was a pretty little boy? He was a pretty kid. The Bible said he was a special. Even Sarah, when she was so beautiful until two kings tried to rob her from Abraham. So she used it for the glory of God. She's the mother of faith as he was the father of faith. Use your personality. Use every bit of the time God gives you. Don't waste a minute. Use your brain if you got one. That's right. Years ago, you know, all of us collected. We loved this and that and the other and and antiques and da-da-da. Now, every table on my house is filled with books and literature and da-da-da-da-da. And before I lost my beloved, I'd say, Gerald, you deserve better than this. Said, it looks like heaven to me. (laughs) We're in this for keeps, and I'm investing everything I've got in this. I'm putting every egg I've got in this basket. Every egg I've got. Every day I've got, every ounce of strength I've got, every talent, every smile, every whatever, I'm investing it in this. This is going to last forever. Forever. So my influence and my favor, you can't buy any of that. You can't buy that. No money could buy that. Bill Gates can't buy it. 
Jeff Bozaz, Warren Buffett, Mark Zuckerberg, or Larry Ellison. I don't even know how to pronounce all their names. <laughs> but I wouldn't trade places with a one of them today, not one. They're, they're in the big magazine that they're the five richest Americans in 217, according to Forbes, or if that's the way you pronounce it. But none of these have enough money to buy what you have. And you were not predestined. This is for, say it with me, whosoever will. And if you will today it's for whosoever will. You can leave here in a worse shape than you came or you can leave here better than you came. It's for whosoever will. My body is an instrument of worship. I affect the heavenlies when I do this. That's warfare. I'm lucky that I can do that. I'm very blessed. This is warfare. Clap your hands. Do it big. Break the sound barrier. Yes! Shaking and trembling. That's warfare. The devil is trembling right now. Let Texas never be the same. We'll do it again if you'll sit down. We'll do it again. I don't care if somebody runs around this church. Don't bemoan that fact. Say, that's warfare. David said, I feel like running through a troop and jumping over a wall. I'm investing my life in this. You may be seated. I have the Holy Ghost, which is wisdom, knowledge, understanding, all that the Holy Ghost represents. Pastor preached a sermon on the sevenfold spirit, and Isaiah talked about it. Don't have time to cover all of this. All I'm going to tell you is that the Lord Jesus Christ loves every one of us beyond my ability to tell you how much he loves you. And he's given that to every one of us. And I don't care where you are, he'll feed you. If he feeds the birds. And he fixed it for the robin and all the rest of them. And it's amazing how he fixed them, every one, so that they couldn't take it away from the other one. It's a truth. That's your God. He said that nothing can what? From the what? Not death. Come on, say it with me. Not death. Not life. Not angels. Not principalities, not powers, not things present, not things tomorrow to come, not height, not depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Paul said, nay, and all these things, tribulation, say it with me, distress, Distress. persecution, Persecution. famine, Famine. nakedness, Nakedness. peril, Peril. sword, Sword. shout it, we are more more. than conquerors through him that loved us. Say, I'm, and he cares about me right now, I'm investing everything I've got back to him and his kingdom.
we say this, but listen to me. Life isn't about you, it's about Him. Well, follow me. So make it that way. Don't just sing it. Don't just say it. Say, do it. If it's about Him, make it about Him. You can't get up any morning and call Him everything He is. You would, you, you, you don't know enough of words to, to lift Him up and exalt Him. You don't know. You don't know enough. You can't brag on Him good enough. You can't brag on Him. His, he said, my biceps, I can reach down into the gutterest gutter and pull them out. You don't know what I can do. Don't sit and look condescendingly on me no matter where you see me. God can get me out of this mess. God can bring me out of anything. God can bring me out of anything. And today my desire would be for you that 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 of Mary. For behold, henceforth from now on, things will never be the same. That's what that little 14 or 15 year old girl said. It's amazing to me when I read her song and how she answered that angel. She said, things will never be the same for me again. All generations are going to call me blessed. That little teenage single girl, unknown Hebrew girl, the most honored woman in the history of the world. And don't try to get God figured out. You won't figure God out. Our sweet lady that was talking, Sister Ferris, I believe was her name. She mentioned Ruth and Boaz. Ruth was a Moabite. Ten generations, that little girl could not come into the house of God where you are today. Couldn't come. But when she looked at Naomi and said, you've told me three times to go back, I ain't going back. I'm going with you. Your God's going to be my God. Your people's going to be my people. When you go to church, I'm going to church. I ain't going back. When she said that, she broke that ten generational curse. Do you know that she's a type of the Gentile bride? Do you know that Boaz, that rich man she married, is the son of a harlot, Rahab? You want to get God figured out? Come up and see me sometime. And then he and she will be a type at that marriage supper of the Lamb. And you heard all about her, the good stuff. Let me just tell you, folks, take what you've got, trust God and go on and pray and seek God. Go to church, hold up the hands of your pastor, love everybody, forgive, and go on. Say, let God handle all of this other. Say, I can't handle it. I don't, I don't know how to handle it. So, whatever your status, leave this singles conference saying, from now on, things will never be the same. Don't waste your life. Invest it. Do what lasts forever. Shout that. Do what lasts forever. I'm going to invest my life in something that will last forever. The stock market is fluctuating. This world is going down. Don't lose everything you've got. Let God. So really, what should matter to you? That's not an easy question because every one of us are different. And because we're all unique, we spend countless hours and phenomenal amounts of money seeking guidance regarding our lives. Is it possible to honor God and thrive at the same time? In this book that the man just... Finding Your Greater Yes, Living a Life That Echoes in Eternity... Dr. Dan Erickson says this in that book. Wouldn't hurt you to get it and read it. I do not fear failure. I fear succeeding at what doesn't really matter. We're driven to succeed. No one sets out to be a failure. Yet our successes are not all the same. Some of our goals are measured in earthly terms. Say money, Money. business, Business. education, 
possessions, prestige, position, and say none of these things are bad. Come on, say that. Say none of these things are bad. Say they're all good. But they become bad if you pursue them to the exclusion of successes that would echo in eternity. So do what last? Wherever you find yourself today, say, I'm going to do something that will last. If I give a cold drink of water in the name of a disciple, I will be rewarded. In my life, there's a man here that got the Holy Ghost in 1969 in Dallas, Texas, up here shouting and said, I'm 63 years old. You were there speaking, and I got the Holy Ghost. I didn't say this to him, but I said, thank God you're still going on. But my re- my reward is not, I, I won't get my re- reward as my pastor teaches when I die. I won't get that till the Lord comes back, because my reward is keep accruing. It's keeping on gaining reward. So what you invest here today, what you gave up here in this offering, God Almighty saw every bit of that, and if he doesn't send that back to you, then his word is not what he said. He said, I will rebuke the devourer. I will open up the heavens. I'll pour you out a blessing that will far exceed what you walked up here in days of. God's purposes for us exceed our human capabilities to accomplish them. Our efforts can't succeed apart from him. And that's exactly how God intended it to be. When he reveals his plans, he is also promising to fulfill those plans. So trust him and remember what the angel told Mary. For with God, what? Nothing shall be impossible. God keeps his promises. Regardless of how difficult the circumstances may seem, say Gabriel's statement to that little teenage virgin girl about God should be our statement of faith. Say nothing. nothing. Shout it again. Nothing, nothing. Is, impossible is impossible with God. In Jesus' famed Sermon on the Mount, he said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now follow me right here. Do not lay up, but lay up. Do not lay up, but lay up. This may be interpreted to be rephrased re, re, uh, phrased as do not give priority to these temporal things, but give priority to the eternal things. It does not mean that it is wrong for you to have assets as insurance, investment plans, and retirement plans, and all of that. God's not against that. In fact, you couldn't have given an offering a while ago if you hadn't have made some money to give it. And you couldn't, that's right. And our churches couldn't build churches if you didn't have money to pay tithes on. So make you a bundle full, but give God the rest. (laughs) Pay your tithes and your offerings and say, put God first. No, savings account, I wish I had one bigger than I got, don't you? I couldn't leave my check open. They might have written more than I had. So Jesus is addressing us to invest our future with him by giving ourselves to him. Every morning, say every morning. Don't make a dedication here today that you can't keep tomorrow. Let that commitment go on and on and on. If I can, I'll make it back to prayer meeting tonight in Alexandria and they can tell you I'll be on that front row there praying and crying out to God. It's the Saturday night prayer meeting. I want to make every prayer meeting I can make. They're going to tell you just a little something in a minute. (laughs) Giving, loving him, serving him, serving others. Listen, Listen to this, and I'm rushing now. God loves you. Love him. Love others. Hear me. Those seven words actually fulfill the Bible according to Jesus' own words. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
None other commandment greater than these, Mark says. Matthew adds this to it. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And Luke adds this. Do that, do this, and thou shalt live. So God loves you. Love him back and then love others. And when he told them when he'd washed their feet, you love one another like I've loved you. And I laid down my life for you. Come on, folks. Let's get better at this loving business. Do all of this. Do all of this. Do all of this. Thank you for bringing that offering. That's amazing. That's amazing. I pray God doubles it up to you a hundredfold. Make the will of God uppermost in all of your thoughts. Don't let shadows frighten you. Don't let the stock market frighten you. It's up today. And I, just, just keep on holding on. Say, God feeds the sparrows. And honey, if he didn't do something to them, Robin would never get nothing. <laughs> on March the 3rd, in this area, just a little ways from here, 1926, in Zavala, Texas, my godly, pioneering mother gave birth to me speaking in tongues. Midwife delivered me. As the Spirit of God moved upon her, they had to hold her in bed to keep her from getting out and shouting. This Holy Ghost is real. He'll, he'll see you through the valley. He'll see you on the mountaintop. And I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow, but she is being brave and strong. And she's an example to us. And I guarantee you we ran the devil out of here in the very beginning of this service. He's gone. He ain't on my shoulder talking to me now. Uh-uh. No. It's a frightening thought, though, for me now at 92. There will never be a time since that time that I will be living forever somewhere. So forever. See, so I'm going to be li living forever somewhere. Forever and eternity. I'll live on and on and on. And so will you. That awesome fact should be the priority of your life every day you give up. Get up. What am I going to do today to invest my life in this everlasting kingdom? What am I going to do? 75 years ago this September the 10th, I married the greatest man. I can't even talk. I, if I hadn't stayed busy, I would have lost my mind. But my beloved Gerald. I have never met anyone whose convictions were as profound as his concerning the ministry and the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and believed it belonged to the whole world and that he was responsible. And then the verities of character, conduct, and destiny were more pronounced than, uh, uh, than mine. Who was, he was sweeping the country right here at Dieball, right here at Dieball some 70 Five years ago, had a hundred soul revival, stayed in the home with a widow woman, fasted four days a week, and that's more than seven decades ago. Seventy-five years ago, February 1943, before glossolalia or the charismatic experience was popular, for five years, I couldn't even testify after I married him. I just sang and smiled and played my accordion and loved people but he wouldn't leave me the way he found me. He looked at me and said, you've inherited your religion and you need a brand new revolutionary experience. If you intend to minister in this supernatural with me, you've got to shed that little Pentecostal traditional girl. I want every young lady to hear me. After five years of praying an hour every day and fasting one day a week, which soon became three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, as he was doing, we were conducting a revival in Lake Charles, Louisiana for the late Brother Evans. It happened. It was due after we'd retired for the evening and we had, were sound asleep. I was awakened on this special um, during the first week of that revival, and we had had a little meal together. We had gone. I, I was fast asleep. It was after midnight, and I was awakened out of this deep sleep, crying so convulsingly I couldn't even speak. It was like something had broken loose deep on the inside of me, and it came gushing out of my innermost being like rivers of pure living water. It awakened my beloved, who was frightened to know what had happened to me. 
when it let up and I could even speak, I said, Gerald, because back then they did much about women preachers. I said, Gerald, I don't think I'm being called to preach, but you'll never have to beg me to pray or to fast or pray with seekers in the altar or to win souls anymore. You may be sorry you ever woke me up because some, <laughs> something has broken loose on the inside of me and I'll never be the same. That's what you came for, girls. And I haven't been. And he shoved me and pushed me and made room for me and would push me ahead of himself because he believed that women in the last days said, I will pour out my spirit upon your sons and your daughters. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And as I stand here today, 92 years of age, it consumes me. It wakens me. I, I, I can't hardly hold my peace when somebody's preaching or talking. I want to get in there and help them. I want to say it with them because it's inside of me. It, it, it has intensified my desire to live the exchange life. What does this world look like that's fixing to fall and Babylon is going to fall in one hour? You want to invest it? Oh, too awesome and too sacred to talk about that unexplainable, life-changing. I became a soul winner for Jesus and a prayer warrior. I traded my life like he had. After that, I took advantage of every opportunity to witness to anybody, anywhere, anytime. Brother Barnes was pastoring in Pendleton, Arkansas. I don't know that there were 50 people in that little, uh, little town. And we didn't have any sinners. And uh, we were living in the back of the church. And, just, yeah. and you just got so many sermons to preach to saints, and we were evangelists. Get the Holy Ghost and go witness. Go win some souls. Yeah. Oh, my. There at that place, and Sister, uh, uh, she had a broken leg. And, and there was a chicken that they had under the three, what you call it, tub that they took baths in. And somebody gave them that chicken for us to eat. So they went out there to grab that chicken, and he flew off. <laughs> All of that, folks, goes into life. It goes into life, all of that. I went to, I, hey, I'm still, I'm, I'm still very young. That's before pastor. He's 68. And uh, I, I go to Brother Barnes, and I say, Brother Barnes, would I embarrass you if I go to the high school and ask them if I can speak to their, uh, their uh, main session and play my accordion and sing? He said, well, certainly not. I went. I spoke to the principal or the superintendent. He was delighted. And so when I went, I sang and made them laugh and talked about this and that. And I said, please come to hear us at the... Do you know that 50 people got the Holy Ghost in that one little revival? Out of that school, they bust them in from everywhere. Say, I can do it. Say, I can do it. Say, I can do it can do it. A can do it can do it. Say it again. Say, I'm a can do it. And I can do it. I wish somebody would shout, I'm going to do it. Let it rush out. Let that flow out of you today before you leave here. Let something break loose on the inside of you before you leave here today. Uh, it was a national conference in New Orleans. Sister Harper reminded me of this. It was quite a few years ago and when the conference was down there. They didn't have an outreach then. And I went to the superintendent and asked him if we could have a street meeting. We had a street meeting. I played my accordion. They gathered around us. Sister Harper stood in our church and told us, she said, I was there. One hundred people got the Holy Ghost in that street meeting that many years. Say, come on, everybody. 
Say, we've got something to tell this world. We've got something to share. Say, God's not through with me yet. No, God's not through with you yet. And, and so when we go to Alexandria, I'd never taught a Sunday school class. No, I'd never taught a Sunday school class. Did good to play my accordion and sing. And the, the adult classes were divided. Sister Morgan taught the one and Brother Morgan the other. And for three days and first week, I, got, uh, I didn't do anything but drink water, put my face on that old bare wooden floor in that old parsonage that was 16 feet high. And uh, I had to move your bed around every time, the water. And I got on my face. I said, Lord, I told you I didn't want to be a preacher's wife. I don't know how to do it, but you said if I would seek you first, you will, your will, your kingdom, and the church is a part of your kingdom, I'm seeking it first. Now you do the rest. I'm asking you to do what I need to do there Sunday morning. That first Sunday morning, I began to teach. The class was full with many visitors. The superintendent of the Sunday school was sitting and auditing me. They had come to see and hear the new pastors. The Holy Ghost fell while I was teaching and confirmed my teaching. And five people stood and they got the Holy Ghost while they were standing. Nobody had to be praying with them. Say, it's going to happen. Say, it's going to happen. Say, and he's still doing it. Say, he's still doing it. Oh, and I, I'm going to skip some of this because let me tell you, I've got some good stuff to tell you here. And, and the apostle Jude, the Lord's half-brother in the flesh, and neither of those boys, James or Jude, said, I'm a half-brother of Jesus Christ. Jude did say, I, I'm a brother of James because James became the celebrated bishop there of the first church in Jerusalem. But Jude writes a powerful letter. Beloved, build up yourselves on your most holy faith, meaning edify yourselves with the apostolic teaching. Contend for the faith once delivered. Accept no form or alternative. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with groanings which cannot be uttered. Pray in tongues unknown to you and the devil. Warfare tongues. Every day, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our God. Refer manifold, plenteous, multiplied. His mercy is new every morning. Have compassion, which is a churning, twisting paroxysm on the inside of you. A compelling, constraining that is something that will make a difference in men and women's lives who are in bondage and in darkness. All I'm telling you, folks, you need to release the past today. Release the past. And answer the call now to pray. Say, answer the call to pray. Release the past. And, call, and Dan and Dia, I want you to stand because that church in the POA, just stand right here. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this, and I may call on their daughter. Come right here. Just stay right here, right now. I want you to see them. All I'm going to tell you, folks, is that all these years, Alexander's been a 24-7 praying church. We've never been in a prayer revival like we are in right now. I want Dan and Dia to tell you, and they are, they're able to go anywhere. God gave them a business that supplies their needs. It's unbelievable. And they can go anywhere that they need to go to help establish any of that. Dia, you just tell what's all happening there in the few minutes. At POA, we're not only in revival, but we're in a prayer revival. On Mondays now, which was our family night prior, families are meeting in a conference room praying together in intercessory prayer. On Tuesday, Dan meets with men. 28 men were there last Tuesday. And he's going to tell you further, but he's baptized three men because of that prayer revival. On Wednesday, Sister Vani Marshall started Women of War after our pastor's powerful Mother's Day message. We have 40 members at most times on Wednesday that we intercede for our pastors, for our church, and for our cities. On Thursdays, we have prodigals and MIAs that we meet for intercessory prayer. We also have men's intercessory prayer in the conference room. On Fridays, our journey, college age, and our youth are praying, and over 50 were there present last night. So we are in revival. At POA. Texas District, I am excited about what God is doing in the Apostolic Church. And it's our duty and it's our job to reach every soul that we can. 
Our church has a grace house. Many of you might know our church has a, has a grace house. And we were praying last Tuesday night at our men's prayer meeting. And a new guy came in from our grace house. And I introduced myself. I said, my name is Dan. He said, my name is Chris. He said, I got a story to tell you. He said, four years ago, I was across the street from this church, and I got caught doing drugs. And I had to go to jail for four years. But now, God has brought me Four years later, on the other side of the road, of the street, on the right side of the street, we baptized him in the name of Jesus. And now he is doing great for God. I came in contact with a guy that was bound by alcohol. He had nowhere to go. He said, Dan, I've lost my job. I've lost my family. Now my house is up for sale, and I've lost everything because of alcohol. We begin to talk. He said, I'm at, I'm at my wit's end. I can't go any further. I said, well, you know what? You come to the right place at the right time. I began to talk to him. He began to cry. He said, God, I need you. I got to have you. We left my office where I was at. We went and baptized him in the name of Jesus. I saw him the next day. I said, how you doing, Keith? He said, that's the best thing that I've ever, I've ever felt in my whole life in the name of Jesus. God came, uh, gave me contact with another person that worked at a restaurant. I began to talk to him. And as I was, I was, I was conducting our business, he began to show me, a, tell me a story about God, how God saved his life. He should have died in a car wreck. He said, I was right here. And I went on this curve right here too fast. And God saved my life. He said, Dan, I know that God has a plan for me. And right then, God says, speak it. And I began to talk to him about what God wants to do for him. Five minutes later, we were back at my office. I brought him to the church, and we baptized him in Jesus' name. He works at a restaurant in, in Alexandria. I saw him about a week later. I said, I said, Calvin, how you feel? He said, I feel great. I feel lighter. I feel I've never been, I've never been the same since I've been baptized in Jesus' name. Folks, we got a lost and dying world that we have got to reach. And you pray. That God sends you an honest-hearted soul, and you can be a great soul winner because we got to snatch him out of the gates of hell in Jesus' name. Beautiful deal. And their young girl that's a medical student spends hours, even after every service, they have to almost sit there and wait and make her to go home. All I'm telling you, folks, this has got to get a hold of us like it has never. They didn't get to tell you about Jennifer. Jennifer got Popsy's book that's out there. I've got two Popsy that brought in about seven or eight churches around here. His book is full of miracles and bringing in these churches. She read that book. She went out to his, to, out to his grave at the cemetery. Jennifer it will get her Ph.D. this coming December. She is a counselor in the city. Her boss told her, I'll give you as much time off as you want and won't even dock you. You can go anywhere you need to go to tell what you're telling people. Let me tell you, that girl went out there and stood on Popsy's grave, and she said, I want what this man had. I've read this book. If he can have it, I can have it, and I'm going to get it. Now, let me tell you the rest of the story. They can verify this. She lives in, she lives in a beautiful district in Alexandria. Dr. David uh, uh, passed... Brooks, uh, the pastor of the big uh, Calvary Baptist Church that they sat by me during Because of the Times, loves our church, and he lives across the street. Pastor and he are very close. Pastor told him, said, the cars that you see around there day and night, said the woman started a prayer meeting, and people knocked down her door early every morning on the way to work because they're in trouble and they want prayer. And he said, well, I'm going to go over there and check it out with her. He went over there and talked with her. He told me sitting by me at because of the times he said let me tell you something I started a 40 day prayer meeting at Calvary Baptist Church in one hour sessions and I took the first hour all I'm telling you is that Jennifer today is the what day of Jennifer's 211 days every night, every morning, all the, uh, 200, and, it, and she gets them filled with the Holy Ghost. She just got her license, and she takes them to the church and baptizes them. She just got, it's happening like you have never seen. It's amazing. Say, we're not going to sit on this. Say, we're not going to sit on this. 
No, say, we're not, we're, we've got something that everybody has got to have. Oh, they're waiting for somebody to throw them a life jacket. Say, they're hurting. They're bruised. They're forgotten. They're lonely. She's prayed, I don't know how many through and got them baptized. She went and baptized them herself. She's there every Saturday morning at the church with a prayer group. She comes and walks that platform for her pastor. She did this morning. She did yesterday morning. All I'm telling you, folks, you've got some... You, I don't care where you, what your status is. Say, I can pray. I can hold up the hands of my pastor. And as long as his hands are hold up, you'll fight your battle and your children's battles. And say, I'm not, I'm not going to be the same when I leave here. I'm not going to go ha- home and sit down on my hands. Helen, say, I'm still going to do it. Helen, say, I'm still going to do it. Say, I'm gonna, still going to do it. Oh, no matter their laughter or their passivity to spiritual things, deep inside they're hurting. Say, here, here is what I wanted to, and I'm rushing. Have I done good? No, I mean, have I gone over time? Okay, now follow me. A young woman, now get this. In this gen- oh, I have so much I could tell you. Say, you've told us enough. A young woman of this generation, you've heard her speak, you've read her books. She's not Pentecostal. She said, and I quote, I'm going to scream from the mountaintop until the day I die that my God will redeem any life, save any soul, and use anybody who will cooperate with him. When I read her statement, look, I said, I know. She said, I know because I know what he did for me and I didn't have, he didn't have anything good to start with when he found me. Amen. You know this woman. They teach her Bible studies and many uh, other persuasions. But as for me, when I read that, God, I'll come behind in no gift. There will not be a woman in any circles of religious Christianity that will outdo me. If this woman is going to scream it, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me. I'm going to scream a little louder. Only I will say, my my God will redeem any life, save any soul, use anybody, no matter how sinful and messed up their life may be. If they will repent and be born again of what on the Spirit, say He will forgive them. He will remit their sins. And their past will be as beautiful as when they were born a baby. I know that. I know that because his word. This word tells me. So say 18 times in some form or other. He says I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. To him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. I, even I, will blot out their transgressions for mine own sake. I will remember their sins no more. I'm going to tell people that. I will tell them their sins have been borne by another. I will tell them their sins are cast behind God's back. I will tell them their sins are cast into the depths of the sea. I will tell them that their sins are washed away. You want me to name all the rest of them? I've got 18 more. All I can tell... Go ahead and tell them. Yeah. Complete, you're completely covered, I'll tell them. Totally forgiven, I'll tell them. You, they're passed out of sight. They're no longer imputed to you. They're on me. Remember, no, Jesus said, remember no longer against you. They're pardoned. They're erased. They're purged. They're put away. They're remitted. They're removed as far as the east is from the west. Cannot be found. They're canceled. That's 18 times that God is saying, if you'll go get them and they'll repent of it, I'll cancel everything. I'll bring them. Come on. I want you to stand there and give yourself to God like you never have. I want you to cry out. I want waters to gush out of every one of you. I want something to gush out of you like never have. Don't let up, folks. Don't let up. Go ahead. That's it. Fall on your face. Stretch yourself out. Yeah, stretch yourself out and cry out. Lift up your voices and cry out. Yes. 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 
Go ahead. Go ahead. It's going to happen in you. Don't go home the same. Go ahead. Cry it out. Scream it out. Yes, I will, Lord. Yes, I will. I wish y'all knew it'll all soon be. I wish you knew it'll all soon be over. After a while, I feel. Yes. 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 Go ahead, go ahead. Yes. I give myself. I give myself. Come on and join them up here at the front if you want to. Come on. Yes. Go ahead, Helen. I give myself again. I give myself again, over and over, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I give myself away. I give myself away. I will give it all. I will give it all. I will give it all. Yes, shout it out. You Shout it out. The fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit. They want it.
hands. Lay hands on one another. Lay hands on your brother or your sister. Lay hands on one another. Lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. Yes.
threefold cord is hard to break. A threefold cord is hard to break. And shout. Clap your hands and shout. Hard to break. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. It all soon be over. Let me have your attention just a minute. Oh, yes. Say, it's happened. Say it out loud. It's happened. I, I want you to leave here talking in tongues. Have you ever talked in tongues? The devil don't know what you're saying. And nobody else knows what you're saying. I want you to talk in tongues before you leave here. I want you to go home for a red hot church tomorrow. Have a bear, have the greatest service you've ever had in your church. Tell your pastor I'm here to hold up your hands. Say we're going to have a prayer revival. Say we're going to have a prayer revival. If Jennifer Williams, an African-American that we picked up on bus routes, and she's a single woman in her 50s, if that woman moved in her pretty home, all of her furniture back in her living room, because they go, even with the prayer revival, we got nine people went by her home yesterday morning knocking on the door, wanting to get in there and have a prayer revival. Hey, hey, she baptized a, a woman judge in our city. Follow me. She baptized the mayor of, uh, of uh, Cheneyville, just below Alexandria. Nothing is impossible with God. We, wait a minute. We shout about all of that, but we don't believe it. We've got the impossible one inside of us. <laughs> loving God, loving people. We're going to have revival at our churches this weekend. Say, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to sit on my hands. I'm going to clap them. I'm going to pray. Do you know, follow me. Say, David, 75 times did this.
Where is your source? Where is your source? Judge uh, 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 LSU coach, uh, uh, Coach Orr, yeah, was that above all last year. And uh, he was sitting in pastor's office, and he's telling him, da-da-da-da-da, and all. His wife got the Holy Ghost at, at, at because of the times last year. And so I walk in there, and you know how energetic, and da-da-da-da. He said, when I grow up, I want to be like you. I said, let me tell you, Coach, that's my source. That's my life. That's my energy. Say, I got it. Say, I got it. If you will get that that you got right there, say, every day. Say that with me. Say it out loud. Come out of your shell. Say, be bold. Go to the throne room. Say, I'm going to the mercy throne room. Say, bold. I'm going to be loving and kind, but I'm going to tell people that God loves them boldly. You got something, but you got to get it every day. Don't turn no day over to the devil. Don't waste one minute of your time. Wake up praising the Lord. Wake up reading this Bible. I, can, I cannot tell you what all I read before I got ready this morning and prayed to my God. And, and Lenora, oh, she's the funniest thing. She's the best thing that ever happened to POA. She keeps a lot of that. Uh, she's about as powerful as anybody there. She said, Lane, God is so tired of hearing from you. He is saying, please give me a break. Not the way she talks, Helen. All I'm telling you, folks, God don't want no break. He said, if you, as long as you ask, I'll keep on giving. And I want him to keep on giving. I wish you would greet one another and say, we're going to have revival. Say, we're going to be a prayer warrior.